Hey guys, Jason from Critical Dice, and I'm here with Chris Perkins of Hi. Wizards of the Coast and D and D, the yeah. former DM to the stars. And uh, former, <laughs> well, <laughs> you relinquished your mantle, didn't you? I'm DMing to some stars, some stars this weekend. Yeah, yeah, you're you're like the um, was it uh, uh, Professor Emeritus? There we go. DM Emeritus. Okay. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about that for a second. So uh, just this year, you stepped away from uh, like the gods of Faerun. You stepped away from the DM table for Acquisitions Incorporated. Mm -hmm. Gave it over to Jeremy. Uh, what's that been like? Has it been like a, a nice, like, ah, I have more time now, or you miss it? What's that been like? A little of both. I do have a lot more time to do other things, and I have many more things to do than I used to. Yes. So that was part of the yeah the whole reason why. But part of it, too, was, you know, there was a story to tell in Ravnica, and yeah. Jeremy worked on the Ravnica book, so okay. he seemed like the guy to do that. Yeah. Uh, but it's part of it, too, was after 11 years, just having a bit of a change yeah. uh, adds some novelty. Excellent. Uh, and that it just felt like the right time. Yeah. Did yeah. you give any, Jeremy any a piece of advice as he stepped into that new role? Uh, I told him that he should go as hard as possible on Patrick Rothfuss. I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's good advice. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, a little Patrick, reversal of fortune. Exactly, because Patrick doesn't have any pictures to blackmail uh, him. So as far as we know, so right. Yeah, right. he can actually hold them to the rules. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So now that you have all this extra time, you've been working on this new book that's coming out here pretty soon, uh, that you guys just announced, um, mm -hmm. and it is called Descent to Avernus, right? Correct. So, and, and this is this your brainchild? Is this your baby? This one isn't. In, okay. It's the first one in several years that isn't. Okay. Uh, but Adam Lee, who is a member of our team, one of our narrative designers, okay. uh, wanted to take a crack at the story, and this is the story he and his collaborators came up with. Where I come into it is at the end, helping to bring it all together. Right. So I was kind of backstopping in yeah. a way, yeah. and serving as the managing editor on a story for the first time in a while, which okay. was a, kind of a nice change for me to yeah. see all the ideas they came up with. Now, what do we make a book out of? You know, that right, kind of, kind of cutting away the things that aren't the statute, that exactly. aren't the story. Yeah, right. and exactly. looking at it from a more dispassionate point of view. I wasn't involved yeah. in all the bits and pieces, so I can look see how it's all working. Yeah, you can be J. Jonah Jameson and go, no, get rid of that, right. get rid of that. Yeah, yeah. I exactly. like that analogy, that works. Yeah, that works yeah. really well, yeah. So I've noticed this trend. So, uh, you know, this, this event, you call, he's called it The Descent, and I look back to some of the other published adventures that aren't compilations, and you've got stuff like like Storm King's Thunder, it takes place in the air, and then you brought us into the city with Dragon Heist, and then down below, and now with Descent, we're going even further. Like, it is how low can you yeah, go? Yeah, how low can <laughs> can you go? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, there are many layers to the Nine Hells. That's true. We're, just we're mostly the first. sticking on the first one. Yeah. Uh, with every story, we're trying to tackle themes that are unique to that story to create a story that's very different from the one that comes before and the one that comes after. That's really all we're trying to do. And also just looking to see if there's anything in D&D's past that we might want to bring forward. Right. Tap those nostalgia yeah. bells a little exactly. bit. Exactly. Like Ghost of Salt Marsh is kind of that idea. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Tomb of Annihilation went back to Tomb yeah. of Horrors. Curse of Strahd went back to Ravenloft. Right. Um, Dragon Heist went back to Waterdeep for the first time in a while. So there's always something we're, we're kind of reaching back and pulling forward if we think it's resonant and relevant, yeah. frankly. But since we live in a hellscape, um, it seemed appropriate. <laughs> yes, uh, there's certain crossover <laughs> True, things for sure. Point, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, there was a, one last question I wanted to ask you that came from uh, our community at Critical Dice. And the question is this, what is the favorite character you've ever played and why is it Spurt? <laughs> Uh, well, you're not wrong. It, it, it could easily be my favorite character. There, it was not expected. No. I think that was part of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah they I were was, genuinely shocked when you sat down at the table. Yeah. 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 I was, I was, I was just there visiting uh, uh, Brian Foster to do yeah. an interview, and then I was going to head out. But I caught Matt on the way out, and Matt said, hey, you want to play Cobalt? And I said, okay. Uh, what do your Cobalt sound like? I don't know. Okay. You'll figure it out. I'll yeah. figure it out. Um, we'll do it live. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it wasn't meant to be anything other than, yeah. hey, surprise. Yeah. Uh, and, and you can never predict what's going to blow up, but now that Spurt has, like, he's an idol champion. He's a charming now. little fellow, yeah. I must say. I, he, is, he has crawled his way into my heart. Or, <laughs> Gross. You know, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, Chris, Every, thank you. So, there's a little Spurt on all of us. Uh, that's a great place to stop. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> <Just> kidding. <laughs>